Here at Food Theory HQ, we're always moving to where the truth is hidden. We are utterly unstoppable when it comes to exposing the truth of the food industry. We're no cowards. And we do more than just skim the surface. Ah! Since when is everyone so lactose intolerant around here? Oh wait, since forever, cause we all are. internet welcome to food theory the show that does a body good unlike milk or so i plan to convince you of today that's right welcome to part four seven twenty five who knows there's been so many at this point of our ongoing series entitled the food that you think is good for you actually isn't and you only believe that it is due to a combination of propaganda and fear mongering it's a it's still a working title but today's episode is tackling what is probably for most of us watching in north america and europe the most basic of healthy eating advice that we receive as kids. Drink your milk, it does a body good. Drink your milk, it builds better bones. There are members of my family who are literally forced to drink an eight ounce glass of milk for every single meal. And why not, right? It makes your bones strong, it helps you grow tall, and of course, it's gonna help get you the ladies. I'd like to meet you, but I'll bet you're hoping for a hunk. I'm drinking milk though. Milk's about the best thing I can drink right now to help me build strong arms, powerful legs, and a broad chest. And when all my work is done, will you love me just for my body? Oh boy. Ooh, this is not aged well. Here, pretty swimsuit lady, let me heckle you from various generations of my life. Is this honestly what they taught kids back in the 80s? Will you love me for my milk bod? Because all I've got right now is sensitivity, intelligence, and charm. Please, someone. Drew Gooden, Denny Gonzalez, please, someone. Look into these commercials. Oh, they are a big oof. Now, admittedly, this isn't the first weird commercial that we've had on the show. Though I gotta say, the adolescent fantasies and objectification have been cranked up to 11 here, so it's got that going for it. But what's most unexpected about this thing is that it's coming from an organization that sounds reputable. America's Dairy Farmers, the National Dairy Board. But note here that there are no actual statistics that are mentioned. No references to medical terms beyond the vague words of vitamins, calcium, and bones. Same with all these other star-studded celebrity commercials. Or you got this one, which uses scare tactics to convince us that without milk, we're gonna be losing our arms. Sure, a lot of these are meant to be funny, obviously, but they're also meant to be taken seriously, right? Milk is important for you to drink. It's gonna help you grow bigger and stronger. Because who would just run ads to promote the general concept of milk? This has gotta be some sort of public health announcement coming from the dairy board, right? Well. All of it is actually propaganda. In the case of our sensitive, intelligent, and charming hunk to be, that was actually a commercial created by a consortium of primarily California-based milk producers, as well as the marketing firm McCann Erickson San Francisco. Super progressive of you, California. This wasn't just one company, it was like all the milk producers in California getting together to do a broader advertising campaign. Something that, wouldn't you know, various groups across the US food world have been doing for decades. Member Beef. It's what's for dinner. Dun, dun, dun. Actually, I barely remember that one, but in the early 90s, the Beef Industry Council of America, whatever that is, made a big deal about how exciting and easy it was to cook beef. Pork, the other white meat. Yep, that one's coming straight from the mouths of the pork producers of America. These sorts of campaigns are so misleading because we think of advertisements coming from single companies wanting to sell you their particular version of a product. But in the case of major food producers, they're all working together to just sell you the idea of an industry individual food product. Would each milk company prefer that you drink their brand of milk? Absolutely. But what they all have in common is that they at least want you to drink some milk. So they all band together to produce stuff like this. Milk's got calcium, don't you know? Yeah. So good with teeth, it makes you smile. <laughs> so good, it's wild, you wild. But at least in the case of milk, all this hype is warranted, right? Like, it's full of calcium, it builds stronger bones. Isn't it a superfood? The answer is, as you can probably guess since you're watching on this channel, no. Historically, milk is a super powerful tool that humankind has used, from cavemen to colonizers, in order to stay alive and also promote their own agendas. Yep, that milk. But as a result, it's been one of the hardest food trends to get rid of, and it's literally one of the hardest food trends to digest. So, let's start at the beginning, shall we? We all know that milk comes from cows. 
animals. And eventually we all realize that there's not that much difference between milk we chug from a carton and the milk that we drank as infants, as uncomfortable as that is. Both are designed as a primary food source for baby animals. And yes, there are lots of different kinds of milk out there, like almond milk, pea milk, oat milk, yoo-hoo, but we're just talking about the OG, straight from the, uh, the, the source, as it were. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that when human babies pop out, they're not fully cooked yet. And a mother's milk, with its complex mixture of nutrients, vitamins, proteins, beneficial bacteria, antibodies, and lymphocytes, act as a literal power shake for babies. But is it still the best thing when we get older? What is this? It's mother's milk. Evolution would disagree with you there, Mad Max. See, one of the main components of milk from all mammals is a disaccharide sugar called lactose, the chemical composition of which is actually very difficult to break down in the adult mammalian digestive system. It needs a hit from an extra enzyme called lactase to get the job done thoroughly. And special pro tip here, if you see A's at the end of a protein name, it means that it's the protein's job to slice up another protein so it can be used in your body. Lactase slices up lactose. And here we all thought that science was hard. Anyway, without lactase in our system, lactose becomes uncomfortable to process, and that's when we get ourselves the old tummy trouble. The potty party, if you know what I mean. And the thing is, by the time people hit 20, our bodies are designed to no longer produce enough lactase to break down milk, meaning that evolutionarily, all adults are supposed to be lactose intolerant. So what's the deal then? Why am I still able to eat a 20 scoop for monster every year for my birthday with limited health problems? Outside of you know, the enormous weight gain that comes with it. Well, it all boils down to one word, evolution. We all know that evolution happens via natural selection through random genetic mutation over the course of thousands and millions of years. Us human beings have been able to survive in some of the most varied habitats on Earth because of our genetic variety. Live in a really sunny location? You probably evolved to produce more protective melanin. Need to be able to maybe eat literally anything? Don't worry, our teeth are all kinds of different shapes so we can basically be walking garbage disposal. Nothing around to eat or drink except for the milk from your family cow? We've got a mutation for that. Turns out that shortly after humans began domesticating animals for farming and agriculture, they found that in times of famine, starvation, and when the HelloFresh box got swiped off the porch, that they could turn to old Bessie in the front yard to literally help them survive. Sure, the milk that was being excreted from her udders might not have originally been top of the menu, but it was certainly better to have a stomach ache than a stomach dead. You know, like actually starving to death. And it turns out that a very small percentage of the population in areas where this was happening most frequently, namely Central and Northern Europe, had a little mutation that helped him out with this very circumstance. This mutation is called lactase persistence, where instead of losing lactase when you grow up, you retain it, along with the ability to break down lactose. As such, the lactase persistent people are better able to survive food shortages with the help of old Daisy and Dolores out in the barn. They're also, in general, less farty. Those two things, being alive and less stinky, make them more likely to to mate and procreate. Over the last five or six thousand years, a mere blink of an eye in terms of evolution, a decent portion of the world's population have now become mutants. Lactase mutants, not like telekinesis mutants or anything cool like that. As time went on, people developed lots of derivatives of milk, like cheese, yogurt, and butter. So if you didn't do so hot with milk, maybe you could handle some of those. And thus, the dairy obsession was born out of a desire to not starve to death. This is all totally logical, but it begs the question, does this 5,000 year old food trend really need to still exist. I mean, jello molds were out by the 1930s, and honestly, they were a lot more fun. Sure, staple food products like milk were important in times and places where food is a limited resource, but is milk that nutritionally great for us that we need to keep drinking it when our bodies may or may not even be able to process it in the first place? Is the hype around milk actually warranted, or is milk actually bad for you? The answer is nuanced. If you saw our Chicken McNuggets episode, you know that even the supposedly neutral nutrition advice that we get is often manufactured through corporations, or is just as often filtered through our own governments in order to benefit certain industries. So then where do all the things that we've heard about milk fall? Well, it turns out that milk does have a few clear-cut benefits. For one, milk has been clinically shown to make children grow taller. Not kidding. It's estimated that if you add an additional serving of milk to a child's diet every single day, they may add a full centimeter to their final adult height. And it makes some sense, since milk is designed to make baby cows bigger as fast as possible, since in the wild they need to be big and tall if they 
don't want to get eaten by lions or wolves or literally any other predator out there. So yeah, milk can make you bigger if you drink it as a kid and also very consistently over the years. But it's when we start getting a little older that things get dubious. For instance, research from JAMA Pediatrics tracked teenagers who had consumed large amounts of milk in their childhood. And they showed that their risk of getting a bone fracture was not only the same as non-milk drinkers, but actually higher, especially when you were talking about taller boys. This is one of several studies that show that if you're taller, your bones are larger, which means that you have more body mass to support. And this leads to an increased risk of fractures and breaks, including those really dangerous hip fractures in elderly people. So the milk did make you taller, but also led to more brittle bones later in life that actually break easier. Interestingly enough, what science I was able to find shows that yogurt doesn't have a pronounced effect on height. In fact, it may slightly decrease risk of fracture, but the jury is still out on that one. Maybe we can call it breaking even? On top of that, we know where milk comes from. Lactating cows, who have naturally occurring hormones in their bodies just like a person who's recently had a baby. Not their fault, it's just the way it is. But in many countries, additional hormones or steroids are added to cows to make them produce more milk. On top of the lactose that adults aren't supposed to be consuming, a high milk intake can actually alter some of the hormone balances in our own bodies. Once you know, the results on this one are pretty mixed. Consumption of milk as a child and adolescent may increase your risk of prostate cancer later in life, but drinking milk and eating cheese may decrease your risk of colon cancer. Milk appears to be a pretty mixed bag. Whole milk might increase your cholesterol, skim milk might lower your blood pressure. This list actually goes on and on and on, and it's difficult to suss out where the science ends and where the bias begins. I mean, you have everything from one side of the spectrum where PETA has their seven reasons you should never eat dairy, to the complete other side of the spectrum with the dairy farmers of Wisconsin, who make tens of billions of dollars a year on dairy, tirelessly promoting its benefits to the world. The truth is, obviously, somewhere in the middle of those two extremes. The big question here, is milk worse than other sources of calcium and nutrients that you could get out there? No, not really. Is it better? Nope, not that either. If the primary reason you're drinking milk is to get calcium and vitamin D so you can grow bigger and stronger and impress all the swimsuit models with your body rather than your sensitivity, consider ways to get the same or better nutrition with less controversy and less money. Green vegetables like broccoli and kale, more calcium than milk. If you hate green things, just try eating some beans. You know, those fun little round guys that come in burritos and chili? More calcium than milk. Yep, I was surprised too. Tofu, also a primary source of protein and calcium in places in the world where lactose intolerance is high, and it's both cheaper and healthier than milk. You know what else has the nutrients of milk in a pinch? A good calcium supplement, and a vitamin D drop from the grocery store or pharmacy. Luckily, we live in a day and age where those options are available to us. It is not that hard, friends. So to wrap up this trilogy, tetralogy, uh, whatever it is, our series of episodes about the conspiracies lurking around every corner of the grocery store, the food is different, but the conclusion largely remains the same each time. Read a nutrition label instead of an advertisement. Don't force yourself to eat or drink something because you saw a commercial for it on TV. And for Pete's sake, if a chicken commercial is produced by the Poultry Association or a lettuce commercial shows up from the Cruciferous Educational Council, consider that they might not be the most unbiased source of information. Every food ad you see is designed to make you believe that you're going to be taller, smarter, stronger, and more beautiful if you eat that food. But lo and behold, doing a little research into a more trusted source of information will actually make you smarter, which in turn will make you more beautiful, or so I hear. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs>